everybody. Uh, we are um, excited to have you with us for our Wednesday webinar. This is a really fun day because, of course, we are joined by the getaway guru himself, Mr. Larry Galwix. Thanks, um, Wendy. We knew it would just be a matter of time before we got you on the webinar. That's right. We have to catch you when you're in town. Because and that's not often. It is no, so not often. And so um, with the radio show and everything that you do, it's just always fun to hear from you. And your experience is just um, so, uh, so diverse. And you've got just something that you can always share. And we've talked quite a bit about Alaska. We've talked about it on the right, radio right. show. But the nice thing about a webinar is we really get expand on some information. So that's what I wanted you here today, because I wanted people to be able to, to watch this and learn a little bit more about Alaska, cruising to Alaska, what the options are, why it's fun, why people love doing it. So is that, is that good? No, that's good. You know, Wendy, uh, we're both travel junkies. And the folks watching this webinar, well, you fall into the same category <laughs> as travel junkies. Yeah. We love travel. And I kind of separate my travels into two camps. I have the one and done, and I can't wait to get back. Now, the one and done is I'm glad I went. Don't ever have to go back someplace like Cleveland, you know. <laughs> uh, no offense to Cleveland, but I don't ever have to go back there. But there are other places that I can go back and sometimes see the same thing or new things. And, Wendy, I can't wait to get back there. And Alaska is in that camp. I get to Alaska once or twice a year, always with a cruise group, which is the best way to see Alaska. And then you can add a land tour to Denali and oh, Fairbanks, the, the Kenai Pins Peninsula on. And, you know, I see the same things. I do mostly the same things, but it's a different experience. I can't wait to get back to Alaska. Well, it's that kind of enthusiasm. Matter of fact, one of the things that we were going to talk about in, in this is um, itineraries to look at. We were going to look at activities both on and off the mm -hmm. ship. Um, accommodations when we're talking about right, cruising because right. we are kind of focused on that. And then the benefits of, of group cruising. And so on this webinar, we'll, we'll kind of run through that. We've got a few, uh, a few different um, slides that we'll what, look what at. Why don't I, I comment on these that's up on your screen right. now? There are two basic Alaska itineraries. One I call the North South, the other round trip Seattle. North South is we've got a picture of that. You yeah. want me to pull that up? Uh yeah, go ahead and do that. I was gonna say, there we go. Okay. We can always now that. the actual stops can vary. These right. are not fixed, but the north south is Vancouver to Anchorage or vice versa. The the northbound, the southbound. And the other round trip from Seattle, you are sailing round trip from Seattle. You'll notice that except for about a day, they're really the same itinerary. Both itineraries will get you the inside passage, oh, yeah. glaciers galore, some combination of Juneau, Ketchikan, Skagway, perhaps Sitka or Icy Straits. So you're not going to get them all, but some combination. From Skagway to Anchorage up there, is that like a day cruising? Is that about how long uh, it takes? I've only done Seattle it will be round two, trip. It will be two calendar days. Okay. Uh, where you on the round trip Seattle, you'll be in uh, June or Skagway and head back two calendar days. Here, you're going across Prince William Sound. And one of the differences on the north-south is you generally will get two glacier viewing days. Mm -hmm. We're on the round trip Seattle. Is one better than the other? Not really. You'll find that it's easier to get to Seattle. Your airfare is lower to Seattle than right. Vancouver and Anchorage. But the north-south has two glacier days. And, and you know, it, and gen generally the prices over the whole season, which is May to September, mm -hmm. probably on the north south are a little bit better prices, but it's a higher airfare. So it comes out in the wash, they're about the same. Well, and if you want to get up to Denali, you really need to get oh, you have all to the way do. up. Yes, you do. And they've got some yeah. fantastic land packages. The you know, domed I'm, railway right. and some of those right. things. And no, I'm looking at the uh, what you folks are seeing. You see that note of College Fjord? Mm -hmm. That's not in all itineraries, 
but it's a favorite spot of mine. It's a fjord, which has been carved out by a glacier. 13 glaciers that you can view right in the fjord. Well, and that's also why you uh, get a balcony stateroom, and, and we'll cover that later. Right. But, I mean, the, the wildlife, not just the wildlife, but the oh, wilderness viewing and the wildlife. Now, the viewing. wildlife, are we talking on the ship or off the ship? Um, I'm going to go off the ship Thank because I know much. what you're talking yeah, about. You're <laughs> <not> <laughs> I knew you, where you were going with that. Well, and you know what? One of the things that, and if I can get back to this other slide, you know, the question was, you know, why do so many people love Alaska? Alaska is, I always think, always one of the top five things we hear from people right. that they want to go to Alaska. It it calls to them. It's just so scenic and beautiful. You've already said this is where you would go back every year. So what? I mean, well, there's a rawness. There's there's primal life there. You know, it's a daily struggle of life and death. It's called America's last great frontier. And you can see Creek Street on your screen right now in Ketchikan. That's a throwback to the gold rush era. You can go out in canoes. There's so, so many activities. You can go dog sledding, helicopters, seaplane viewing, fishing, hiking, wildlife viewing. And for botanists, all of the uh, flora and fauna that oh. are there. Everything, yeah. or what I love about cruises, you can be as active or as laid back as you want to be. And well, that's true. I When we went and we went to Mendenhall Glacier uh, one day, I remember looking at this glacier and just thinking it was so amazing. I was so, I felt so blessed to be there. And then this tour of people in, in canoes were canoeing right up to the glacier and I'm like I missed the boat oh, that's where I should be it's down there on that, that canoe you know uh, one of the things that we do on our Alaska cruises is our own exclusive and private shore excursions and tours uh, no offense to the cruise line they have very good tours but they're overpriced and how do I say this politely they're scheduled for the nearly dead <laughs> well, and there's so many people on them. Yeah. I mean, so what we do, you're talking about Mendenhall. When we're yeah. in Juneau, we go whale watching. Of all the cruise ports, Juneau is the best for whale watching. That's not me in the buffet, <laughs> but that's out in the water. The, the difference between the onboard and offboard. That's water. right. I've been known to do a full breach at the buffet table. You think I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, and then after the whale watching on our own boat, we don't share it with anybody else. We go to Mendenhall. And I want to give you a clue, whether you come with me or go on your own. When you get to Mendenhall, there's a ranger visitor center there. Now, as you're facing the glacier to your right, there's a trail that's down to the Nugget Falls, a beautiful waterfall. Oh, wow. And you can get up close and personal with the glacier and the waterfalls. As I'm at the visitor center, that's to my right. But to my left, there's an elevated walkway that is some of the best bear viewing, B-E-A-R viewing. <laughs> not, not the real nature. Uh, B-E-A-R. <laughs> but because you're on an elevated platform, they're, they're fishing for salmon and things. Now, with all wild animals, there's no guarantee. They just don't understand that we're arriving at 1 o'clock. Darn them, they need that, to be a little that, more considerate. That's right. Naming. And it's a great visitor center there, too, and very clean restrooms. <laughs> you know, why is it we're always looking for the clean restrooms? Well, you know, I at my age, I have a personal motto that I follow. Never pass a restroom without <laughs> going in and visiting it. Okay. Uh, what about uh, yeah. accommodations? Well, you know what? Let, we can jump over to the accommodations. Let me go ahead, and it's just right there. Because this this will answer a lot of those questions that we talked about. The difference between when you're on a ship, like you said, the, the best way to see uh, Alaska is the different accommodations on a cruise ship. So if you've never been on a cruise ship before, um, there are four basic categories. And um, inside cabins, obviously, there uh, are the least expensive. And the smallest. And the smallest. But I comfortable. Gonna, but, well, exactly. I mean, look at that picture. It's a beautiful room. You know, um, 
one of the things I don't like about an inside cabin, because I'm very comfortable, I sleep great, but if I wake up in the middle of the night, there's no window. I you can't don't tell. Know that time. I've got to. I've got to go struggle to find my phone to find out. Well, I got to tell you something about inside cabins. That you know, I'm a jokester. I have a lot of fun with people. We have so much fun. Sometimes, just to see if people are listening, as I'm describing these four <laughs> types, I say, "Now, your inside cabin is the smallest of all the cabins." There are no windows and no doors. And I <laughs> see people, uh, people nodding, yes, I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> what no it? doors. What are we, lowering <laughs> you down in a rope? But but it's, uh, as yeah, you said, it's small. It's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, what, I tell you what a lot of families like to do is mom and dad or grandma or yeah. grandpa get a balcony cabin and then to save the dollars, get the kids across the hall yeah, and in all an inside cabin. And all they're doing is sleeping in it. It's That's no right. big deal. They don't have to do that. There's no over. right or wrong to your cabin choice. No, it, it, it's comfort and it's convenient. Or, and uh, cost. It's, it's personal choice, exactly. So um, the inside cabin, again, um, you're, that is a standard inside cabin. Um, then the ocean view staterooms uh, take care of my issue of saying, is, is, it, is the sun up right. yet? Should I be awake? Um, and you can see, uh, you know, outside where we're at, but that's all you get. Those windows don't open. They do not afford any kind of fresh air. They are just there. Um, but natural sunlight. Natural sunlight. You can have a so view much. of what yeah. you're seeing. Then we move to my favorite, the balcony stateroom, sometimes called a veranda. It's a larger cabin, it's a better location. And the entire outside wall, as you can see, are floor to ceiling sliding glass doors to your private veranda. Now, if you're in Tahiti, you're going to be out on the balcony. Not everyone thinks I'm going to spend much time on a balcony in Alaska. You'd be surprised during the daylight hours, you will be out there. But even if you're not, it, it's the visual, it's the experience. As I said, the whole wall is a window well and it also adds square footage that people don't think about because the the perception of that ocean view stateroom and the balcony stateroom is they're basically the same size but as soon as you open up that sign and glass door you've just added extra square footage of living space and when you are um there in the summer and you need the fresh air people who are claustrophobic it's amazing what the fresh air will do for them. And just being able to see that much of, of uh, nature, open that door, get a breeze coming in. It, it really is. I mean, people say once you go balcony, you don't go back. But You don't. You know what's really fun, too, is my, when my wife and I, Kathy, are in Alaska, we're in a balcony stateroom. We always leave the curtains open. You're not in the suite? The, that's the Wendy Fracky of the week. <laughs> I love, I've been in the suite a few times and I love it, but usually we get the yeah. balcony and, you know, the room steward always closes the curtains. Yeah, why? And we always open them up <laughs> at nighttime. <laughs> and because when we wake up, our first view is the scenic grandeur of Alaska. Yeah, it's amazing. And then there's, as I said, the suites and penthouses. Hey, if the finances work, it gives you so much more room. I have this stayed in suites. This is wonderful. This is absolutely a splurge. And there are special occasions where you want the splurge. Um, and, you know. Particularly, you know, if you have a, a family gathering. Oh, yeah. You may want to consider for grandma or grandpa or mom and dad a suite where Everybody can gather, gather at one and place. get together. Yeah, you're not going to get a lot of people together, even in that balcony state. No, can, no. You can throw, throw a few out on the balcony, but, you know, over over there, that is a great idea. Amen. And generational travel right now, I'm just going to say, popular. it is so popular. And one of the best things about being on a cruise is that they do have the kids clubs and activities for the kids and all ages to do, kids of all ages, all out right. the way to the bars. And um, so there, and then there's the time that you get to spend together as a family. So it really does hit all those, um, all those benefits. So um, I know one of the other things it was going back to the itinerary. So just right. kind of, I wanted to talk a little bit about the itinerary sure. because 
you know, you just think you're going to go and you're going to see glaciers. But I think some of the other things that, you know, we're going to point out on this is um, like the White Pass Railway, that very yeah. first one that takes you actually directly into Canada. Now, there's four. This is a typical round trip Seattle itinerary. Yeah. The, it has it's Glacier right. Bay, the granddaddy of them all. It may have a different a Hubbard Glacier, Endicott, Tracy Arm, all of these. It can. Uh, it can vary, and even the stops. Your cruise may have these three stop or four stops. It may have Just Sitka or icy yeah. straits with these. But let's go with his uh, probably the most common and frequent round trip Seattle uh, in Skagway. What a throwback to the mining days! It was a rip roaring town where the law was whoever was the strongest big dog right there. And what's fun there is this was the entry point for the gold rush up mm -hmm. to the Yukon Territory. And there's a beautiful museum there, but they have a train, the White Pass and Yukon Railway, highly recommended, take you up the canyon, through the valley, to the Yukon Territory, and then back. And uh, the best place to sit going up is on the left side facing forward. Mm -hmm. Now, what they do is the seats flip coming back and they say switch. If you've been on the inside and there's good views everywhere, but you can switch. Well, yeah, you can kind of see from that picture on the, the lower left yeah. that if you're, if you're next to the window, next to the mountain, it's not going to be quite as... Yeah. So this picture is coming down. You want to sit on the right side yeah. facing forward. Moving on to Juno. Hey, one stop you got to make. It's at the Red Dog Saloon. <laughs> now, don't let the word saloon throw you off. It's a family-friendly... Or get excited. Or gets me excited. <laughs> but it's a family-friendly restaurant. Yes, they do a, a serve adult beverages there. And, of course, so then all. It's just a lot of fun. Sawdust on the floor. Yeah. A throwback to the old times. Lots of shopping there. On a clear day, I like to take the tram up to Mount Roberts. Mm. And it's oh. right there in the yeah. middle of town. But the big attraction of Juno, as mentioned, was whale watching and Mendenhall Glacier. Now, if you're interested in fishing, you'll want to join the fishing opportunities in Ketchikan. Okay. Uh, there's fishing everywhere, deep sea and lake and uh, stream fishing. But Ketchikan is perhaps the best fishing option. What I love there is the totem parks. There are two of them, the Sackman Village and Potlatch, and they're both wonderful. Uh, Creek Street, which we showed you earlier, goes back to the mining days, kind of a busy business district. A, a busy business. Yes, it's a business. <laughs> Can we just leave it at that? Yeah, yeah. Let, uh, let your mind go on. All these house yeah is uh, anyway and then of course the wildlife viewing is just fantastic there glacier bay if you're lucky and we usually are the calving these mountains of ice uh coming off i was gonna face. say i knew there was a cool word for what that was when all the, when when the ice comes down off the glacier not 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 calving not ca calving <laughs> yes yeah and then victoria british columbia which happens to be the provincial capital of British Columbia. What's interesting, you have Vancouver City on the mainland. Mm -hmm. You have Victoria City on Vancouver Island. So it get a little bit, and it's so much fun. It's you're, so beautiful. Oh, what, I mean, then, the bay that you're just yeah, in, it's gorgeous. You're close walking distance to the downtown marina area, the provincial capital, the iconic Empress Hotel, the marina, Chinatown, all of that. But what I love about Victoria is the Bouchard Gardens. It's about a 45-minute drive from downtown, and uh, it's just not a complete 55 acres of flowers and trees. There's nothing like it in the world. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I, I I am not a gardener, and I kill just about everything that, that gets planted at my house, um, but... You think she's kidding? No, no, I'm, I'm not. My, my family can attest to this. I loved the walk into this garden, and simply because of the uh, creativeness of the design. 
it really is like in this picture, you see all the pastels and the way that it does. I mean, it really intrigues and it is just a beautiful way to spend several hours. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, even if you're not a big garden person and you don't think you're going to enjoy a garden, this place, they've got a carousel, they've got, you know, a cafeteria. Everything. They've got, Everything. It's just a really beautiful place to, to go and um, enjoy some time. And then because I am a lady and I do enjoy my shopping, if you're lucky enough to spend a whole day there, you could go and do the morning at Bouchard. And then still go and shopping. enjoy the shopping and take one of the water ferries across and just really in, enjoy the the whole experience. We did the um, the Skagway, uh, the White Pass Rail Race uh, Rail Pass up to Canada, and we were so excited because we thought that they were going to uh, stamp our passport because we actually got into Canada. They don't do that anymore, apparently. No, nope, no. Nope. So, but um, it was, I I mean, all these stops, and you know we. You talked about bears. We talked about whales. Eagle is something that gets common after oh. what about your second or third? Well, you day? know it's really fun. On the first day, there's an eagle. There's an eagle. <laughs> second day, hey, there's an eagle. There's, there's By oh, the third you day, see that tree? oh, okay. There they are. This is the hundredth eagle that I see. <laughs> and um, and and isn't it great though to to be able to to see um that kind of nature. And there is, there's just so much. Stuff. And in the water, we've talked about whale watching, but you'll see pods of the orcas, uh, dolphins. I mean, it, it is just alive and teeming with life. Exactly. So from the nature to the wildlife to, um, you know, the activities. Now, I did not do a slide on here. Um, about what's fun to do on board the ship. So, you know, this, we, we got a little things about cruising with um, a group, but mm -hmm. we, we chatted a little bit about the onboard activities for the kids clubs. Um, there's several, like all the major cruise lines are going to Alaska. Um, we're focusing on Princess just because there's a couple of really great advantages. And one of the reasons that they, I know it's They're your kind of pioneer of Alaska. Yeah, but... I mean, Royal, Norwegian, um, Park, Celebrity, Celebrity um, Holland America, Holland America is, is a great, they're so, and they're all great in their own you're not, you're not very specific you. ways. No, not at all. So why we, we've been focusing on, on this princess ship here, um, they all have some great activities for all ages. And I think on board the ship, they naturalist. Talk a little bit about the naturalist. That well, they like on board, board and you know, be a park ranger or a naturalist scientist, uh, and they will provide lectures not only say in the main uh, theater, but when you're going through Glacier Bay, they'll be on the ship's uh, speakers. Um, talking yeah. about look over here and look over there. So when you're up on the deck and you, you're yeah. you're over the edge. When I'm having over my the edge. <laughs> over the edge, my afternoon feeding at the buffet. <laughs> look to your right, there's Larry. Yeah. Now, the question you ask here, uh, Wendy, is why go with the group? Yeah. You know, going individually is just fine. I like traveling with the group. And the biggest misconception about group travel is that you're going to be herded like sheep and cattle. Nothing could be further from the truth with a Morris Columbus travel group mm -hmm. tour. Anywhere in the world, we're talking about Alaska. But what the group does is bring discounts to you. It has, we have exclusive onboard activities and exclusive private shore excursions. There's other people there. Now, you can be as involved with the group or disconnected with the is, group and there's so fun. much time but i'll say one thing usually everything goes as planned but life as we've learned these last couple of years uh, post -pandemic travel can happen. Is... you have someone there to help you out i'm hosting a group uh, this august and we'll give some highlights of it august 12th to the 19th mm -hmm. On Princess Cruises, which, by the way, has the best pizza at sea, as a pizza connoisseur, a <laughs> connoisseur, like a, a connoisseur of that. That's right, not a connoisseur, <laughs> not connoisseur. Sewer. There you go. Sewer. Uh, but I'll be there for the group. Something comes up, you have an issue, you have an advocate in your Morris Columbus travel tour host. Yeah. 
I think one of the things I love on this one is you just get to enjoy your family and friends and you don't have to worry um, about really anything. I think that's one of the things that is nice about a group is that, you know, somebody is going to make sure that you're getting from A to B. They're going to make sure you're not going to miss something. Yeah. And you know, the other thing, some people want to do their own thing, which yeah. is just fine. Then sign up for a Morris Columbus travel group get the discounts, get the oh, extra yeah. amenities, and then go do your own own thing and never even see the group. That's okay, but you're going to save a lot of money and pick up a lot of free stuff. Or join us, and I hope you do, yeah. to our activities, our get-togethers, and our exclusive shore excursions. As you can tell, Larry is zero fun to travel with. He is um, just an absolute <laughs> Nothing could be further from the truth. There's a reason that he has his own set of groupies and um, and we love them. And, and and what I love about you is that you love them genuinely. I really do. And I love um, you love being with the people on there. So, um, you know, depending on where we're going on our different cruises, whether it's Alaska or the Mediterranean or the Caribbean or different things, besides the onboard com camaraderie, and that's one of the things that people really enjoy is um, just meeting new people. And a lot of times our groups are, are going to be local, even though we do have a very broad, like national audience and people who do go on our trips. But, right. um, you know, you get to sit down with, with people who have very similar uh, backgrounds. And so it's nice dinner conversation. And very diverse backgrounds. Exactly, too. diverse as well. And so there's lectures and learning opportunities and everything else that you mentioned there. So... It's it's something to consider, right? But if not, you know, there's still so many wonderful things. But we did talk about your Alaska cruise for this summer, and there's still space, which still shocks me, based on this price, because Alaska is always a more expensive cruise option compared yes. to the Caribbean. Let me tell you what's happening. We're coming out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and cruise lines are saying, "Where should we put our ships?" Yeah. And there is a deployment of all these new ships to Alaska. Now, pricing and travel is like anything else. I call it economics 101, supply and demand. There are more ships, more berths, more availability in, La in Alaska than we've ever seen. Consequently, the prices are incredible. This will market correct. Next year, that's right. You, I, this I is the year you, to take advantage you of. You will not price. see it for the cruise that I'm taking on the Royal Princess, one of their newer ships. I've sailed on it before, it's absolutely spectacular. And we will be doing that round trip Seattle itinerary August 12th to the 19th of this year, this summer 2023, with Juno, Ketchikan, Skagway, Glacier Bay, Victoria. I'll be your personal host and tour guide, which maybe is a reason to look at a different <laughs> cruise. Or, no, or take you. advantage of the rate and then go and, and then, do your own then thing. ditch go with Or, or go bed. just find Larry at the buffet. You guys could yeah. just hang it up oh, at the buffet. I actually together. rolled my bed up with. Oh, it's his afternoon feeding. He's taking the chocolate by an IV. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd uh, love to have you. This ship is fantastic. We're going to have so much fun. But here's the best part. The lead cabin, which is the inside cabin, yes. nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Many people say, well, I'll go with the inside because I'm only going to sleep there and I want to spend the money on other things. Nothing wrong with that. No. Yet others say, I'll go for the balcony cabin or a suite. It enhances the experience. It's a much larger cabin than the inside. Yes. Better location. And you have, again, those sliding glass doors a picture window of what is transpiring outside. So in peak season, now the Alaska cruise season is basically May to September. Um, the weather is a little sketchy in May and September. Right. And, uh, but July and August. Uh, are that is the, the peak best. of peak season. Our dates are August 12 to 19. Now catch this at this time of year, a lead or inside cabin, typically in peak season, yeah. about a thousand bucks, right? Plus taxes. Our price, because we locked in a group rate last year, rates start at just seven seventy eight 
per person double occupancy plus your government taxes. Yes, Uncle Sam has never met anything. He didn't like the tax. Alaska is no different. Seven seventy eight per person plus taxes. That is absolutely well. And the balcony insanity. though is is the better, yeah. over fourteen hundred. Rate start on the balcony cabin for my cruise. 1448, where typically a balcony cabin is anywhere in 1900 to $2,200, call it two grand. 1448 plus tax, plus all the fun things that we're going to be doing. You can drive to Seattle and make a longer vacation, or it's just a two hour flight from Salt Lake City. Well, if you end up watching this after this cruise, we're sorry that you missed this amazing deal. Sorry. But Morris Columbus has got amazing agents who can hook you up with some fantastic deals. And um, if you're watching this in 2024, because it will be on our YouTube channel, I what? know you are going to have another. I, already, oh, already I already have a date for 2024. It's not on the website. We yeah, have a don't, don't call it. Don't call it. Give it. Give it a little bit of time. But it will be round trip Seattle with Princess Cruises including Glacier Bay. It's basically the same itinerary. And the departure date will be July 13th of 2024. Perfect. And well, I, it's not so too early. If this year it doesn't work, jump in while the discount cabins are available. Um, give us a little bit of time to put it together. You can always go to our website, morriscolumbus.com morriscolumbus.com and then click on escorted tours the follow-up page will have europe and africa and asia so and cruises click on cruises click on the cruises like i said if you're looking for your own adventure um morris columbus agents are always ready to help you find the very best deals on the very best ships that are going to fit your interests the best so we hope that this has answered some of your questions on cruising to alaska we are so grateful for your time, Larry, and we appreciate you uh, giving us a, a watch on this. And um, we we say happy cruising and safe travels. And um, we, again, appreciate your time and hope to see you on one of the future trips. See you in Alaska. In Alaska. Thank you so much.